well will make your dreams come true. But I swear to God, a couple days ago, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, this Gigguk video was titled, You Will Never Accomplish Anything. I think he changes his titles and thumbnails at times to mess with the algorithm, but let's see what he has to say. This, mm. this hits hard. A dream doesn't become reality through magic. You gotta Taylor do Swift. it. Taylor Swift. Anyone who's ever tried to achieve something will- very inspirational. Thank you, Taylor. Or no, doing stuff is hard. Starting a business, learning a new language, getting in shape, even if something is trivial, setting up a New Year's resolution you don't immediately give up on after a week of making it. Many of us have something we want to achieve, some far mm. off goal we've had for a while, and here you are lying in bed at 2 a.m. getting recommended a video of some inspirational ass. No, I'm streaming to my audience of like seven people talking about anime videos right now. Come on now, Giga. Going, you want to be an alpha like me? It's easy. I wake up at 3 a.m. last month to get a head start. 4 a.m. Make piss. It's too late. You got to like meditate. Like You only sleep two hours. You got to meditate. You got to journal. You got to drink these supplements that you can only buy from him, by the way. That's how they get you. 5 a.m. Eject piss. 6 a.m. Drink piss. Which is why if any of you have gone through this before, if any of you are in the process of undertaking some big personal projects, you need mm. to read Beaten Motion. This yeah. is a story about those who have a dream and those who work hard to achieve it, but also how easy it can be to lose your way, stumbling across the infinite roadblocks on that path, giving up on it and becoming bitter about other people people trying to accomplish what you couldn't way too fucking relatable holy shit i think a lot of people can relate to this right everybody has their abstract goals their dreams that they want to accomplish but sometimes or most of the times you fail in life you just take continuous else but sometimes that one dub at the end does make it worthwhile but most people won't even try to achieve their dreams they won't even try to even take the first step. Why? Because they're too afraid of failure, right? It feels bad to fail at something. What if you get mocked up in public, right? You make a video, I don't know, maybe you wanna be a fucking YouTuber. You make a fucking video, no one watches it, people shit on you, it's like, damn, that feels fucking terrible. So then you go into this pessimistic, you know, um, mindset of, well, you know what? I was doomed to fail regardless. Why even try? And then that just becomes a very like positive cycle of, I won't even try because I know I'll fail. So it's just this infinite doom lifestyle. And then what happens is you see other people succeeding. Then you're like, why the fuck did they succeed? Why isn't it me that's not succeeding? And then this entitlement turns into something so toxic. Holy shit, this is so real, dude. I've never read a story that hit so close to home when it came to shooting for a goal I set for myself, and in the process, lit a fire under my ass to not forget why I set that goal in the first place. Because maybe the only missing piece I didn't have for getting to my dreams was right there in front of me. Mm. A cute anime girl legging me on. Some dreams can be big, but some... <laughs> You know, in real life, you might not have a cute anime girl that saves your life, but sometimes all you need is that one girl to pull you out. Now, then again, is that always going to happen in real life? Probably not, but you can bet your ass it'll happen in anime. Dreams can also be small, like having a nice meal, and that dream might not be so far away thanks to my friends over at Boxu, today's sponsor. Boxu's Y'all know what to do. Use the discount code hashtag Gigguk for your first, I don't know, fucking Boxu They're thing. They're a fickle thing. It's best. All right. They're let's, $15 let's go back. Dollars off, guys. Thank you very much to Boxu for sponsoring me today. Back to the video. Dreams. Okay. They're a fickle thing, especially if they take off the mask. Many of us have had our own dreams, and somewhere along the way, we may have given up on that dream. Maybe you've gotten older and had that cynical friend tell you to grow up because that dream's never going to happen. If the I think when you're young, you're in high school, you're definitely more idealistic and you might have these dreams. But as you get older, life, the pressure of society, responsibilities, your lack of competence that leads to results, will often like crush you to the point that you don't even think of dreaming anymore. You become very numb and you become a zombie. Then you get put into this, this like, you become a cog in the wheel as you grow up. Now, instead of like having these grandiose dreams, like when I was a kid, I want to be a fucking astronaut. I want to be fire truck man. I want to like save the world. I want to do all these cool shit. I'm a professional athlete, movie star, blah, blah, blah. But then you realize you're actually not that special. In fact, you're very mediocre. You're incredibly average. So just... Getting a good education, getting a good office job, working nine to five for the next 20 to 30 years of your life, and then retiring so that then you can live. That's pretty much the life that is set out for you. And once you get put into this routine, if you get put into this routine, you can't even hope to dream anymore. And you might think that this is funny, but me even pursuing anime reaction content. Me, like when I'm at my day job, all I do is daydream about thinking about content, what else I can make and trying to strategize around that. But that actually gives me fulfillment because me stepping out to do my creative pursuit on YouTube, it is pretty lazy. It's pretty dumb. I'm just watching anime, but still 
I'm able to like form a community around it based off a of common interest and I'm able to grow that way. It's definitely a lot more fulfilling and worthwhile doing compared to my day job, right? But dreams like that, it often you forget because life is just too fucking hard and you just don't have time for dreams anymore. That's true. Just remember these words. Bees don't waste their time explaining to flies why honey is better than shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> That was a real quote I saw on TikTok about what? achieving your dreams. But hey, maybe that guy was onto something. Honey, No, I guarantee you that quote is, he knows that it's a stupid quote, but if he said it, it's so ridiculous, other people will comment on it, saying how stupid it is, which boosts the engagement of that TikTok video and then continues to go viral. D tastes better than shit, probably. Now tell me, are you a bee or a fly? Huh? Tatsuhiko? I think we want to be a bee. Is a fly. But he wasn't always like that. The only thing he ever wanted to become as a kid was an animator. Day in, day out, he would draw, show his parents, improve his craft. An animator was what he was going to become until one day when some bully showed his work to a girl and she said the one thing no boy ever wants to hear. Oh god, she's about to fucking destroy him. You. Oh! Cringe. Yeah. No! Even to this day, cringe takes the lives of thousands of teenagers worldwide. So he vowed never to be cringe again and quit drawing. His dream ended as quickly as it started. That is... Holy shit. You know, when stuff like that happens, what you should do is just say, fuck you and move forward. But when you're a kid like this in high school, like a pretty girl like that's opinion, that could pretty much just determine your entire life. Like that, if that actually happened in real life, and I'm sure it has, it'll fuck your personality. Straight up, your brain will get fucked and you won't be able to do some things anymore in the future because of that moment. So we found a new passion, a new dream, music. He paused. Are we going Bochi the Rock now? Okay, let's Everything go. Everything into music. His heart, his soul. He started a band. He started composing his own songs. He was painfully mediocre. He didn't Ugh. have the spark. He didn't have the talent. And over time, crashes back down to reality. Classic fly behavior. Over time, he realized average people don't achieve their dreams. It's dumb to even... This is a really dangerous, but it's a line that hits too hard for me. Average people don't achieve their dreams. I think that... I'm pretty average myself. I think my entire life has been, you might be just a slightly above average, but never good enough to qualify for that dream job. That, that's, that's, that's something that you apply for, but you always get rejected because you just weren't good enough. How often do you go to a job interview, you do something, you think that you did your best. You thought that you poured your heart there and you are the best fit. Then you get an email of rejection saying, hey, thanks for your time, you know, we really enjoyed you, but it's just, ah, oh, we just had other better candidates. It's not you, you know, it's, it's not you. It's like, damn, it really is me. And then you get sucked into this deep cycle of depression thinking, why am I so average? If I'm so average, is there any point trying? If I just keep trying, won't I just be wasting my time? right? So this is where a little bit of that Sigma grind set actually comes in healthy because sometimes you need a little bit of that edge to kind of say, you know what? Fuck everyone else. I'm going to invest into myself and prove everyone wrong. But sometimes you fall into this vat of toxicity of depression, thinking that you are average. Then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Then you won't even try to achieve your dreams. So again, if you don't even try, that's a hundred percent guarantee that you'll never succeed. But if you like if you actually do try, even though it might be slim, right? There is still a possibility. You never know. I have dreams. Let's just start shitting on everyone around me who has a stupid dream they want to shoot for. <laughs> These are the worst type of people, but it's also very relatable. Jealousy, envy, when other people seem to be having such an easy time succeeding, doing something so easily, like in succeeding, when you have such a hard time, it's... It's, it's such a natural human thing to feel this kind of jealousy and envy. To my, and even me, like this is, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but I am very self-aware. Obviously, viewership numbers are everything. So when you see other people making, um, like even the Freedom videos, Jujutsu Kaisen, other anime reactors, that's just seemingly popping off. Like every video they publish, it just pops the fuck off. And you're here wondering, I put in just as much as time as them. Why am I succeeding? See, that's the thing. It's not about working hard. It's about working smart. Just because you work hard does not mean you're entitled to success. In fact, working hard is the bare minimum a person can do. Everybody works hard. What sets you apart from everyone else though is how smart you're working, right? The different strategies being involved. But damn, that jealousy, that envy, it's such a weird feeling. But the best thing that I found for myself is to catch myself, be self-aware and, and think to myself, hey, instead of being jealous, why don't you actually think about what th what, how they're doing things differently? If you see a person in your same field succeeding, why don't you take the time to actually study them? 
use them as inspiration, as motivation, thinking this person has done it. Why can't I? Instead of thinking, why is this person doing it and I can't do this? Right? I think that's the healthy way to do it. What a loser. You know the thing about guys like you? Uh -huh. I hate their guts! <laughs> Jesus, this an isekai. This is Nico, a cool, spunky, emotional girl, and certified fly hater. The type of person who isn't gonna let some downbeat loser shit on other people's dreams, even if oh. it means briefly making it seem like she pushed that loser into an oncoming vehicle. Jesus, all right. And then he just gets isekai, and then maybe he achieved his dreams. But I see. So this girl comes out of nowhere and just like changes his entire mindset on how like people like accomplishes their dreams. That's a bit excessive. So Tatsuhiko does what any man would do after confronting a near-death experience with a truck and a cool anime girl. Get inspired. <laughs> <laughs> He's a guy. Fans be like. He questions <laughs> how that bright, optimistic kid turned into such a sad, twisted adult. He starts trolling through years of his old animation, and you know what? They weren't bad. They were decent, and most importantly, he had fun doing them. What it's that fucking girl from the intro that told him cringe! Why did he ever give up on this dream in the first place? Maybe he was just approaching it wrong. Maybe it wasn't just a waste of time. Maybe he could actually do it, and before he knew it, a flame had been lit up again. He spends the next three months animating a fan-made music video of his favorite indie singer. It's tough work. It didn't turn out perfect, but he felt a satisfaction he thought he couldn't feel anymore. And at the end of that tunnel, there was someone there, someone who had been waiting years to see him again himself he was that inner child bursting with mm. vigor and enthusiasm he thought was long gone lost in the cynical road to adulthood when in reality he was right there waiting for that young spark of passion to be reignited that young spark of passion to be reignited that's such a hard thing to get back sometimes you can never get that back sometimes i feel like when i make a youtube content like this it does feel like that spark is back it's definitely more back than it's ever been compared to those days where I'm just like slaving away, just doing my nine to five and just coming home and just doing the same routine over and over again. Just thinking to myself, is this my life? That was chapter one. Dreamcast, <laughs> Cadbury's, Minecraft. If you couldn't tell, this is a manga about dreams. What does it mean to shoot for a dream? How easy it is to get lost on the way of achieving it. The importance of having one in the first place. Beaten Motion is a manga that immediately connected with that side of me that wanted to go out and achieve something. That feeling you get when you make the commitment to I mean, this guy's have achieved a lot. I'm sure Kikuk himself wants to have other goals and stuff. I'm just saying, but this is a very successful I'll guy. A massive life project. This is a story about art and artists and the struggles mm. that goes into being creative. But really, it hits an emotional core I think almost anyone can relate to. Because everybody fails, right? The 0.1% of people will succeed in their field being the top of their top. But for every one person that pops off being like a famous VTuber, a famous streamer, a famous YouTuber, I don't know, some, some other stuff, right? There's like thousands of thousands of other people that also tried their best and failed. And those people, unfortunately, can turn into this guy just being like stuck in this toxicity. But if you're able to find an anime girl and realize that, hey, there's a different way about it, maybe things can change. No, I think it's just about being self-aware and just like never giving up on your dreams, even if it feels like it's like despair. Because you know why? Because it's not necessarily about achieving your dream. It's more about having a dream that you can work towards so that every day you feel like you have a purpose. Every day you feel like you're getting out of bed for the sake of achieving your dreams. Not for the sake of going to school, not for the sake of, you know, going to work and all these different bullshit necessities that you have to do. I'm talking about something that you want to do every day when you wake up. Is there something that you actually want to do? If, do you, if you don't have an answer for that, I don't think you're living. I think you just become a zombie and that's completely fine. I think everybody, myself included, has lived like that. But if you're able to catch yourself and you figure out that thing that you want to do, maybe there's a dream there that you just don't know yet. Maybe. Everyone, everyone I know has an ambition, even if that ambition is just trying to find an ambition in the first place. And this is a bitingly real look at what that journey looks like. Not just for Tatsuhiko. Nico, it turns out, is the indie singer he was a fan of and drew an animated video for. And even oh. though she's clearly more outspoken about people who put down other people's dreams, that doesn't mean she doesn't get anxiety about achieving her own. She wants to be a famous singer-songwriter. The path for anyone getting to their goals can be far more arduous than we ever imagined when we set out on that journey. Sometimes, all it takes is the right person to say the right thing at the right time to ignite your passion for something. But
Just one person saying, hey, I believe in you, and you're like, oh, I can really do but this. Sadly, what I feel we see more often is the wrong person saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. That the haters on TikTok saying, shut the fuck up. I want to see that anime clip. Why are you talking over it? And I'm like, God fucking damn it. I'm getting shit on by 12 year olds on TikTok again. Completely extinguishes that passion. And beat emotion is chock full of moments on both sides of that spectrum you see without being overly optimistic or cynical with the reality of what it's like to chase a dream. One scene that stood out for me was when a famous director was giving advice to a bunch of school kids. If you have a dream, he said, imagine yourself in five years, then 10 years. Fully visualize a path to that dream of yours, then write it down and look at it from time to time. And some kids like, that's it? That's all? I think it's important to do that because in five, 10 years, you're going to lose sight of that dream because in five years, you will become a totally different person. A lot of things can happen in five years. A shitload of life experiences can happen to the point where you will forget all about your dreams. And if you can just have a reference point to look back at, maybe that can save you. All we need to do? And he's like, nope, but no dream will come true if you can't imagine it first. Now that's some B talk right there. To many Don't of be us, a fly, guys. Be a B. just that dreams something intangible something out of reach and sometimes there's a certain comfort in that when there's a goal so far beyond your grasp you can fantasize about it mm. imagine yourself in that position and it feels good there's no pressure for you to go out and do it because you can never imagine yourself getting there in the first place but what it's kind of like window shopping yeah it's kind of like it's a comforting daydream right you think about being like successful you think about all this different shit that could happen if you're like popular famous successful whatever the fuck that means yeah there is some level of like like, uh, what's, what's the word? Pleasure from that, for sure. Once you actually take the steps to visualize your path to that goal, that's what separates the dreamers from yeah. the believers, the bees from the flies. You gotta you're put in the work. You're not a boy with a dream anymore, you're a man with a plan. And if we can collectively all do that, then together, we will be men with plen. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, but it this rhymes. is when it starts getting scary. It's not just some far off idea. It actually seems tangible. And what's terrifying isn't the thought of not achieving your dreams. It's the thought of trying and failing along the way. But that's the thing. You just have to go in with the assumption that you will fail. The moment that you embrace failure and the moment that you're able to think that failures are just lessons in disguise, the better you'll be able to move forward because this is the thing that prevents everyone from pushing forward. Everyone gives up way too quick. Now, there are cases, right? Exceptional cases where sometimes it's better for you to give up and focus on something else, right? Sometimes you're trying to make a fish climb a tree when they're trying to swim instead, when they should be swimming instead, right? Obviously, this is a very abstract example, but I still do think that people think people are too scared of failure to the point they'll never even try or take the first step. And you know what? Succeeding at whatever you're doing, there might be a very slim chance, 1% chance, who knows what the percentage is, right? But it's not 0% that, you know, it, it's, it's not a guarantee that you won't succeed. But if you don't try, that is an absolute guarantee that you won't succeed. This is a fear every character in the story is constantly struggling with. Not me though, I don't have that issue because you know, mama didn't raise no quitter and you can't quit something if you never started anything in the first place. Early on. That is such a fucked up mindset that I used to have a lot. I think it went a lot for like, like relationships and girlfriends too. Cause like I realized at a certain point that why did I ever feel sad? Why did I ever get depressed? Well, it's because of attachments. The being dependent on other people was the root cause of my problems. So if I never had friends, and if I never had a girlfriend or got to know people, then I can't feel hurt when inevitably we go on a separate path as college completes, you know, you're done high school. Do you think that you're gonna meet your high school friends in the college? Maybe they will, but for the most part, people, you know, go drift their different ways. And there was a part, there was a part in my life when I started to think it's better if I just have nothing around me from the beginning because then I can never get hurt. This also applies here, right? In terms of like going for dreams. If you never tried going for your dreams, then you'll never get hurt. So in that aspect, it's like, oh, that's a much better way of living. You know what? I'm just going to indulge in my life doing whatever I want to do. But that's also kind of deluding yourself, right? I think we all say these things to protect our feelings. But at the end of the day, deep inside, a part of us do realize that shit. Maybe I should be trying a little bit harder. Maybe I should try instead of being so scared of trying. And again, if you embrace that failure, I think it'll be a lot easier. Nico and Tatsuhiko have a shared dream of working on a big project together. She'd write and sing the song and he'd animate the music video. She makes the beats, he makes the motions. Eh? Get it? Beats and motion. That's the title. Ha ha ha. Eh? 
Ah? They meet up, discuss ideas, scout locations, storyboard scenes. They were making progress. They were taking all the right steps. Oh, what's this? Out of nowhere, Nico gets an offer to be signed by a massive record label. The project has to be put How the on fuck? indefinite hold. Damn. That's fine, you know, because at least one of them gets to have their dream come to fruition. This is great news. Are you going to be jealous at this point? Is the boy going to be jealous at the girl's success and then continue to be like, you know what? I'm just going to be toxic and fuck this shit. Everyone else gets to succeed except me. Why not me? Why not me? Are we going to go that direction? That project can just wait for another time. For now, let's just be happy that one of them gets to take a big step towards their dreams. Good oh, for her. Well, the day she was getting signed, the higher ups of the record label decided to stop debuting all new artists due to budget issues. For how long? For an undetermined amount of time. Plot twist. I've never right. seen a story so accurate. We're back to square one. We portray that unpredictable journey you can take when trying to achieve something. You may have this all mapped out in your head. You start at point A and your destination is at point B. That's where your goals lie. But it's never that way. You're going to go in directions. You might go in circles here and there, but it's going to eventually you will get to B, but it's never this line. You will never Fine. do that way. Simple. But then due to unforeseen circumstances, it means you have to have a pit stop at C first, yep. then D, then E, then F, then G. And before you know it, your map looks like this. You're completely lost. You don't even know where you are, where your destination is, or even why you started the journey in the first place. It's a shonen battle series where the end game is your dream and your opponent is life. And let me tell you, Life pretty damn OP. The series has this way of doing things that really makes it feel like it hits close to home. This is the debut manga of Naoki Fujita, but you'd think that they'd be a veteran that's been in the industry for years with the way he lays out these panels that sometimes feels a little too real. Even if it's just some small moment that doesn't have any bearing to the larger plot. There's a scene where Tatsuhiko is just reminiscing on how he got this passion in the first place. And the manga takes us back to when he was a kid, standing at the beach. When you're in school, you're bombarded with different stimuli that come crashing at you. And as as he looks down, he sees different pieces of paper, math, PE, English, movies. Anime. He happened to pick up the fragment that said anime. Yeah. Other kids picked up different fragments and he walked away leaving the other fragments behind. And seeing this, even though I'd never heard anyone describe it this way, I was like, damn. I get that. The manga has this way of conveying thoughts and imagery that seems so intimate you can almost feel the author's own life experience bleed across every page. This is because it probably is the author's life experience, right? He's probably writing a relatable story because it's relatable, not only because can everyone else can share the experience, but because the author's also lived it. doesn't just that. feel like a fictional story. This feels like someone's deepest emotions, hopes and anxieties etched onto the page. Some lines of dialogue feel so biting. I almost feel like I'm intruding in a therapy session, hearing all the lines the mangaka ever received on his own journey. Characters will say a piece that cuts so deeply, it almost feels a bit too on the nose. And I'm sitting here thinking, man, are you good? Is there anything you want to get off your chest? But it's moments like these that give the story its weight. This is a series that exudes genuine human emotion from every single single page. It's the type of story you can find something to learn from without it ever being too preachy. I honestly feel like anyone who has a goal in life, or even those who are lost and perhaps searching for one, will find a moment that really hits close to home to something you've gone through or are dealing with. I, I think stuff like this is super important to read or just like keep track of. Being aware of your point in life and not becoming a zombie I think is the most important thing. Maybe it's a little, what's the word? Audacious? A little... Like, for me to call people zombies is pretty much me calling other people NPCs, which is pretty disrespectful. But I think I'm also not wrong in the sense that most people live without a clear purpose in their life because they become a zombie because of the pressures they felt from life. Repeated failures, you know, being reminded that you will never succeed. But if you have something like this to kind of take you back to square one and kind of relight that passion, I think it's worth it. You know, I found myself losing hope of achieving my goals before. I've wanted something and worked my ass off to get there, but somewhere along the road, I'd lost touch with the motivation I had when I started it. Mm. But sometimes you get that moment where you feel that spark being relit and those are the moments that stick with you. Those you know what those days are? For me, those are on Wednesdays when Eminence and Shadow releases and my videos pop off and Sundays when 100 Girlfriend releases. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Those sparks are the save point on the journey to making your dream come true. And it's those little moments, I think, that is what Beaten Motion is all about. This is a series that shows you every side of that long, arduous road that anyone takes when achieving something. It doesn't sugarcoat anything, but it doesn't undermine the value of smaller, more intimate goals. No matter how trivial or meaningless those goals may seem to other people. Are you enjoying the weather there? Yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, but you're in the bin. It calls people out for judging others on their dreams and makes it clear that all dreams, no matter how big or small, are valid and important to those who work hard to achieve them. Listen, Nobed, if I want to have a, a swim in my own bin, 
on the hottest day that we've ever had in England, then I'm entitled to... I mean, if that's your dream to swim in your fucking bin, go for it. And while calling those people out, teaches you to own up on your own harsh criticisms of others. All right, sorry. Yeah, you should be sorry. Off you toddle. But with that all said, it still remains grounded and keeps you keenly aware that you need to be realistic. Most dreams don't come true. Ah, and I think that's fine if most dreams don't come true. And what, what a frame to pause that. And I think that's totally fine if most dreams don't come true. Because at the end of the day, if you work towards a dream, Let's say that dream is like the stars, right? If you aim for the stars, you might not get there. Most of the times you won't, but you will probably land on the cloud. Meaning, even if you don't get to that destination, that final goal that you had in mind, the fact that you try to do it will probably make you a little bit more further ahead in life. Yeah? You'll be better than, you'll be in a position better than someone that didn't even try in the beginning. So again, having a dream doesn't mean that you need to achieve it. It's just something that keeps you motivated and keeps you fulfilled so that every day you can live with some sort of purpose and move forward. Doesn't matter if you get to the destination again, it's about that journey. I guess what I'm trying to say with all this is I'm actually a fly. Remember guys, be a bee. December again. Be a bee, don't be a fly. Very interesting video from Giga. Give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, but topics like this hit very deep for me because I think it's a very relatable topic even in stuff that I'm doing currently in terms of content creation or my day job and stuff like that I'm just always thinking to myself what is my dream I don't really know it's a very abstract goal what I do know is I want to live life doing something I want to do rather than doing something I need to do every day I wake up because I have to go to work but recently I've been changing that every day I wake up because I have to stream it's not really I have to I want to stream and by doing this, I'm able to make content and I'm able to also kind of motivate myself. And it feels like I'm, I have more control over my life. Now, will I ever become like a huge channel that's like, that's like very successful and stuff like that? I don't think that matters, right? Ha seeing growth on your channel, seeing on others, like more success in terms of quantifiable metrics like viewership, blah, blah, blah. That definitely does feel good and kind of validates you and keeps you motivated to move forward. But just having something that I truly believe in that I can like, that I believe in myself and I continue to work on every day, it gives me a sense of purpose and discipline and focus compared to a lifestyle where I had nothing and every day it just felt like just random days bleeding over. And it's like, damn, I, I realized that if I don't some, do something right now, like in five, 10 years, I'm going to blink and I'm going to ask myself, what the fuck even happened? So I implore every one of you guys to figure out, do you have that thing that makes you want to do something when you wake up? Again, when you wake up, do you have something that you want to do, right? And if, and if there is something like that, then I think you're on the right track. But if you don't, I think you need to ask yourself some critical questions and try to think of a way to move forward.